What's up, guys? It's uh, Tom from Chalking Fitness, uh, and I'm joined again by Jason Croxon, host of the CrossFit Bath podcast. Hello. Uh, we had so much fun, two hours of fun, in fact, talking about the Rogue Invitational. <laughs> well, I, I, I had lots of fun, but that uh, I thought, you know, it would be awesome to kind of get Jason back on and we'd talk about the, the next big comp that's coming in the, uh, the fragments of the 2020 competitive season that remains, which is Mayhem Madness, uh, which is due to be at the beginning of August. Yeah, exciting times because uh, it was supposed to be, you know, just kicking off as the Games is ending. Uh, and obviously the games have been pushed back even further once again. So now they kind of have the whole week to themselves. So uh, that's good good for us because otherwise that would have been about six hours of, <laughs> of recording we'd probably have had to done to to cover both the games and Mayhem Madness. So, um, yeah. yeah. It would have been like clear the calendar, you know, open the bandwidth. We've got lots to try and catch up on. But I, I think a lot of people might be especially because of like the global lockdown, a lot of people have just ruled out kind of any competition um, th this year, really. You know, we've seen all the sanctionals cancel. Um, there've been a whole lot of things going on within CrossFit, CrossFit HQ, CrossFit Games, um, and just whether that, that will even happen, whether it will happen under a CrossFit banner. Um, and then we were treated to a, a real spectacle, uh, an online spectacle, really, by, by Rogue and the Rogue Invitational, uh, not, not too many weeks ago now. Um, and at that, and there were also in the pipe work, um, the next big competition was this, this, uh, mayhem madness, which, which actually came about because of the, um, uh, the announcement that the CrossFit games, because of the kind of global pandemic was going to be significantly reducing in size, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the kind of the immediate thing that people noticed was the, the cut in the elite individual competition because it was uh, the, the field was dramatically reduced and we know that that meant national champions weren't going which uh, you know caused a, a bit of an uproar for some but looking at the the grander crossfit game scene uh, you discovered that while the the field of elite individuals both men and female was being dramatically cut all other competition of the games was completely eliminated so there were no teams no teens no age groups. It was just all gone. So there were just going to be male and female elite, and that was it. Which, yeah. as you can imagine, not, yeah. not everyone was happy about. Yeah, was a, yeah, there was a lot of disappointment there, not only for the national champions in the individual field, um, many of, of whom are elite in their own right, um, were, were on the cusp, on the bubble of, of qualifying through the Open as well. Uh, Zach George, for example. Um, and yeah, the, the teams element, you know, I think some of the biggest names there are, are, are Rich Froning, Scott Panchik, um, who had both stepped away from individual competition, Froning for a number of years now, and has been very adamant that he would never go back to, to individual competition. One of the reasons being that, you know, he has a, a real focus on, on his family now and, and, and kind of other ventures outside of, of individual competition. So I don't think it's surprising really to see that um, Froning, but more broadly CrossFit Mayhem, which is a huge entity within uh, the kind of the CrossFit space now, um, looked to put on um, an event to, to service the, uh, the entertainment of, of the teams because they all work just as hard as the individuals. And I think it's safe to say that those teams qualifying for um, the games are, are elite individuals just working as a four. Yeah, and I think uh, it really shows how, you know, last year we had the uh, creation really of these super teams. Uh, previously, in all past years, you, you literally had to train together all year, right? So not all year, but there was a, a certain quantity of time that you needed to have been in the same box training in order to put a team together, which eliminated the chance of you just grabbing your free fittest friends and creating this insane team, um, which meant like Rich's team, was almost head and shoulders above everybody else because they had a, such, you know, a great team of people at Mayhem. What changed was with sanctionals and regionals going away and all of that was this, uh, you know, new rules focusing around the teams that allowed you to just create a, a super team. And there were, you know, strengths and weaknesses there. And you did notice that when you just grabbed the four fittest people and stuck them together, but they never worked out together, that did cause problems, particularly on things like the worm events uh, because they didn't have that kind of flow knowing you know how the others move 
but um, it, it really shows the fact that there's now this kind of desire to see the teams competing. Previously, nobody cared about the teams. Like, unless you knew someone on a team, even when Rich moved over and started doing the teams, nobody really cared so much about the teams. Like, it was good to know that Rich was winning, but that was kind of it, especially when you had teams of six and it was just kind of mm. chaos on the floor. I think last year we saw that really flip and suddenly the teams was at times even more entertaining than the individual competition, yeah. uh, which is why it going away this time, I think was a, a bigger blow than in previous years and why it really did uh, open the way for something like Mayhem Madness to, to come in and probably, uh, you know, it hasn't happened yet, but probably be extremely successful. Yeah. And I, and I think what that also means, though, is that the, like I say, no one was as interested. It, it's no longer seen as the affiliate cup. If, you know, that's perhaps what it was called in, in the past. But what it means is that the team's roster is full of sponsored teams. So whether it be Misfit Athletics, GoWad, RomWad, Team Wit, um, which often bring just an amalgamation of amazing athletes together. But you are left being like, who's who? And who's competing on what team and they'll often jump from one team to another and and it is a, a, a you know a conveyor belt of getting you know athletes that are worthy of competing to the games to the games in the team format yeah and for some i think it was almost a backup plan uh, because you had the ability to kind of have an alternate male and female assigned to each team uh, you'd see some that were maybe still trying to make a run for individual competition that would have yeah. like qualified on a team, but they've got their alternate there. And if they qualify as an individual, someone is going to slip in and take that spot. Uh, so it did, did mean, and this is what we saw last year, that the teams that actually showed up to the games weren't quite the teams that qualified. Uh, mm. The vast majority actually, I think, uh, had one or two alternates taking taking a spot, uh, which some because they qualified for the games uh, and in some cases um, because the person that had helped them get there had already qualified for the games <laughs> and was almost brought in as a ringer, which, you know, is, uh, people have mixed feelings about, yeah, about, yeah, about and that you can, strategy, I suppose. And I think you can understand that, especially when you go back to kind of maybe people still, especially like last year was the first year of super teams, I believe like people still had that, that, you know, impression of it being more of an affiliate cup, you know, those perhaps more of the kind of boxes being represented. So when there was, like, as you've just described, and, and I was going to describe it as gamesmanship, you know, under like how, what is the best way to qualify a team? And a team is a roster of athletes for compete, but yet your roster can be up to, can be six with an alternate male and alternate female can get that a team under that team name to, to, to the games and, and I think we could spend a long time kind of talking about you know what would be the best kind of like super team who would you have as your alternates what order would you use them in um, but, uh, and, and it's, it's interesting but probably kind of raises eyebrows as well especially for people who are very closely affected by that type of strategy. But that that was last year. Who cares about last year? Yeah. Talk about this year. And this, yeah, yeah, and and, and this year. Well, what what have we got? We've. Uh, it, it was not surprising that when they announced that they were dropping the age groups and the teams, that there were very quickly rumours that someone might put on an event. And we have seen that some age group competitions are going to kind of potentially happen in the next few months. But there were rumours definitely around Cookville and the fact that Mayhem might facilitate a team competition. Um, one thing I found with all these things at, at the moment is rumors spread through through social media because there isn't necessarily, you know, this is not happening under a, a um, you know, a CrossFit banner. So you're not going to get it from, say, the CrossFit Games kind of Facebook site or website, emails. Um, Morning Chalk Up do a really good job of having their uh, kind of like finger on the pulse and the uh, their ear to the grapevine. Um talking elite fitness as well. Um, but it was always rumors. And I think it wasn't until the Rogue Invitational that they got Rich Froning on and he was like, yep, this is happening. Um, and, you know, there'll be a, an announcement. And I think it was 17th of June, they kind of explained the format. And it is a format that we've kind of never really seen before because we've never been in this situation before. So um, if you think back to the 
the sanctionals, you know, before COVID, basically before we knew the world was going to change, uh, Mayhem did have a sanctioned event, uh, the Mayhem Classic, but they were only qualifying individuals. And the reason kind of behind that, apart from that it was being done out of their gym, so size was probably also a, a consideration, but was the fact that Rich was, so na- was now so closely associated with the team competition that it would have seemed unfair mm. because it was kind of like him cherry picking basically the team that's going to go, right? Because depending on what programming they put out, yeah. you could make sure that a team went that you know, had you know, certain weaknesses or didn't have certain weaknesses. You could manipulate that. Uh, obviously, Mayhem put forward two teams, so neither of those teams, because at the time of the Mayhem Classic, uh, neither team had qualified for for the uh, the games, yeah. so you know th- there's that temptation there, isn't there? That you know, oh, but maybe they're going to put themselves forward. Um, and and Rich didn't want any of that kind of speculation, right? So he removes himself from mm. the conversation. It's only individuals. So now you're in a situation where not only you know is this taking place basically instead of the games, but Rich is organising everything. So how do you guarantee? that he doesn't you know, put everything down in a way that is going to benefit himself, his team, and even his, his other team. Well, by creating one of the strangest formats of CrossFit competition that we've ever seen is the answer. Yeah, and there's a, there's a really good video on the um, CrossFit Mayhem YouTube channel um, with Rory McKinnon, who's working really closely, I think, with the whole team at Mayhem to uh, explain not only kind of the structure of the kind of the Mayhem Madness event, which will be in August, but also how the qualification works and what they've actually called the, the draft as well, how the workouts will be selected. And uh, there's also a Q&A with Rich and Rory, and they really kind of explained that as soon as qualification's over, they're going to release all of, the, um, all of the workouts so that they're all known. Um, and the way that they're introducing this draft to kind of pick the pick the, um, the kind of order of the workouts is to try and make it as fair as possible because, and we can go into it in a minute, both the kind of um, Mayhem Freedom and Mayhem Independence, who both qualified for what would have been the CrossFit Games via a sanctional event, um, are planning to um, compete. Yeah, it's, st- it's still a little bit kind of fuzzy on exactly who's going uh, because I suppose you know, the reason the games has been pushed back, the reason other things are happening is, uh, you know, different laws uh, are in, in place in different parts of the world. And not all of these teams are coming from America. So it means uh, that maybe there's going to be different red tape that they need to get through to see whether or not they could even go there. But in a, in a perfect world, theoretically, the nine teams that had already qualified for the games are going, uh, whether or not they are going or whether or not perhaps they're able to create a variation of a team maybe uh, is, you know, is still kind of to be seen. Uh, and then even if they qualify, whether or not they can physically get there is going to be another, uh, another hurdle that they're going to have to overcome. But basically, yeah, the nine teams that, are al- that were already going to the games were going, hence the two Mayhem teams. Uh, and then free invites were going to be open for teams that would qualify through the online qualifier. And then as well, the nine teams that had already qualified would also need to do that online qualifier, not to qualify, but to get their ranking, uh, their seeding basically for the competition, as then that's going to play into how these events are, are then selected in the draft that you mentioned. Yeah, Jason, as, as you've already said, so we're going to see nine invites going out to previous sanctional winners but they are also looking to kind of backfill where those kind of kind of podium, like so those finishing on, on top of the podium um, aren't kind of going to accept that, um, that invite. And then there's an online qualifier, which actually just finished on the 23rd of June. Um, so today's what, the 27th, I think. Um, and so, you know, that creates a seeding, as you've already mentioned, uh, but also it selects at least three teams that will kind of also get an invite to the um to, to the, the the final competition in in kind of uh, in august uh, yeah and um i mean just looking at the the graphic that you've made so we talk of a strange format it's also a long competition uh, because it's it's running over basically an entire week so you've got um you're going to have days of competition rest days 
cuts, more rest, <laughs> more cuts, and then a, a, a final uh, competition as well. So it's going to be, it, it's just going to be a <laughs> something very, I don't know, I don't want to say strange because that sounds negative, but it's just going to be a, a unique experience. There we go. And I think um, one of the things, and, and I only really picked up on it in the last couple of years, I think especially when Froning moved to um, kind of team, is that he's an incredible programmer, both for himself, you know, but equally kind of for all the athletes that train at kind of like CrossFit Mayhem. And yes, there are other coaches as well, but, you know, he's with with help from others kind of come up with something that will no doubt be incredible and and i have my fingers crossed that their what what what, what they, their vision kind of comes to reality um and that we're not hampered by kind of lockdown restrictions i know in the q a that they did say that they're planning to allow um spectators but it will be a kind of like invite only kind of vip experience um so you know i don't think anyone uh, should be kind of planning a kind of an impromptu drop in at CrossFit Mayhem uh, the first week in August. Yeah, I I doubt you will make it in. I mean, it is interesting, isn't it? When you think of the the COVID being the cause for all of these changes, if anything was going to be affected, you'd you'd assume the teams, you know, we saw the Rogue, what they were able to do, the Rogue Invitational, one athlete in a box by themselves online. Already, if you'd had four athletes there, potentially depending on the country, that could have been an issue, right? You might not have been allowed yeah. to do that. So um, it, it is interesting. Uh, obviously, I'm not clued in on, you know, America's a big place and they have different lockdown uh, procedures, you know, yeah. for different states. So, I, I, I'm, you know, I don't know exactly what the situation is there, but I'm assuming if they're allowed to run this, then, uh, you know, they, they've they checked all the boxes. Uh, you talked about programming. The, the way they're dealing with the programming is you know it's very clever because one it's going to you know create this very unique situation because of the seeding but also it takes away the issue isn't it i mean even when when sanctionals first kicked off you had people uh, programming for certain sanction events that maybe athletes that were somehow under their banner or were doing their programming or things that were involved and already even if it wasn't the case people were speculating weren't they well is there any way they might have known you know what was coming up maybe they had an, an advantage and you could see that being the complaint here right well it's rich's thing he's programmed it he knows all the workouts that's not fair so they found a way to eliminate that as a problem because yes rich knows all the workouts and so does everybody else. Yeah. And I think there's, isn't there like more workouts than the actual like events? So they'll kind of like populate based on both team draft pick. Um, and also I think there's a chance for um, spectators, well not spectators, but the, the wider community, the fans, us, to, uh, to kind of like have a say in like what events they, they do, um, which I think kind of, it, yeah, it's really innovative. It's really thinking about how can we try and engage the kind of wider community in a very unusual time. Yes, it, it's, and I mean, you talk of gamesmanship, having to decide, you know, do I want to do this workout on day one when I'm feeling fresh, or do I think that I'm going to make it all the way to the final day and this is my wheelhouse workout that I want when I'm going up against the top teams that are left? So I want to put it that like. There's a lot you've got to think about when you're deciding where you want a certain workout to be put in, in the, the week of, of programming. And, and that's becoming more and more important at the elite level because, um, you know, they're all incredible athletes. They can all clean and jerk, you know, huge numbers and they've got unbroken gymnastics. They've got um, amazing kind of work capacity. And, and what I think, you know, and you can see this in the individual side as well, is it, it becomes more about kind of whether it be mindset or recovery and bringing that extra dimension of almost kind of like predetermined structure, you know, that could benefit your team over another really is going to add that kind of additional gamesmanship and uh, uh, a lot more kind of like uh, discussions like this about like, who's it going to benefit? Who's it not going to benefit? Yeah. And I don't think we've come out and said it yet on, on the podcast or the video cast or whatever it is we're doing now. Uh, but obviously, the the seeding 
the, you know, the, the top seeds are going to basically get first pick from a table of workouts and they get to pick the workout they want. And then there's another table that is basically the days of competition and they get to put it where they want on that table. I, I, I think there might be some sort of like workouts have to go at certain time so maybe you get a selection it's not you can't just pick any you know any, any point because I, I guess if it's a a certain length of workout you kind of got to time things out the right way so it, it's probably kind of these ones can fit in column a and these ones can fit in column b and these ones can fit in column c but still uh depending on where you're you're ranked you're going to get first pick of okay we want this workout and we want it at this time next team we want this workout and we want it this time the only teams that are not allowed to pick a workout and i think this is why we the fans get the vote is that neither of the mayhem teams will be allowed to choose a workout or choose a time for a workout so uh you know once again rich really taking himself out of the picture letting everybody else pick the workouts and i think even the workouts if i'm not wrong correct me if i'm wrong are kind of all based on previously done team workouts uh, or uh, games okay. workouts. yeah mm -hmm. so some are i think they were talking about one that was like taken from waterpalooza they've just kind of beefed it up a little bit but uh, it's, yeah, no, yeah yeah it's not that they are, have created these new never before seen strange workouts they're kind of classic workouts that you will have seen maybe with a little twist here and there but it, it shouldn't be anything that people can sort of say well yeah you train that in cookville and no one else does like it, it's it's doing his best to make it as fair as possible across the board with like so we, we've kind of mentioned like which teams we you know should be getting invites through their performance in previous sanctionals so if we kind of like and again it's a snapshot on time let's kind of take a look at some of the names that travel limit uh, you know kind of Limitations, yeah, might be in there, but who might we get to kind of see kind of performing in, in August? So there were nine sanctionals that managed to get themselves in before the kind of global um, lockdown. Um, so we had the Filthy 150 um, in Ireland, Pandaland in China. Um, then we had Southfit um, in uh, Argentina, Dubai, CrossFit Strength and Depth in London. Um, we had the, the Norwegian CrossFit Championships, uh, Waterpalooza. Um, the Australian CrossFit Championships and then the Brazil um, CrossFit Championships as well. So each of the winners from um, from that kind of uh, from those sanctionals um, automatically gets an invite to to, to Mayhem Madness, um, and there is that kind of backfill process. And that all teams have been encouraged, and in fact, it's mandated that they have to also do the online qualifier because it seeds them, but it also enables them to be open to a, a backfill uh, invite as well. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just looking at the, the, the teams that, because, you know, we've obviously speculated that, you know, for some, we don't know whether or not they'll be able to get there. But quite, quite a lot of the teams, the vast majority of teams are American anyway. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a problem solved basically on on that side of things. There are not all of the teams, but I think you're definitely going to have enough teams to put on this competition. So I don't think we need you know potentially not every team that should be there will be there, but you're going to have the vast majority that that qualify and then a few backfills. Yeah, you've got Butcher's Lab and uh, the program, uh, both Scandinavian teams. Um, and then I, I think that's that's kind of it, really. Actually, um, I think uh, Tyrannis Life Tree, who won Brazil, they are um, Canadian, um, mm -hmm. so you know, north of, north of the wall, uh, some some might call it, you know, over in North America. Um, but yeah, I think you know, my understanding is is all the others are predominantly um, American uh, or USA even based athletes. Um, yeah. So that does kind of suggest that the the kind of the travel uh, constraints will be less of an issue but every athlete is entitled to make the decision themselves as well about whether they want to make that journey um and then there's the potential for some backfill as well which might see some other teams which are are um kind of you know not usa based but it, it then does add that kind of complexity around travel so pulling out then the the kind of teams then that kind of from what i can tell would get the, the invite. So we've already spoken about both Mayhem teams being there. So Mayhem Freedom and Mayhem Independence who um, qualify through Strength in Depth uh, and 
the Australian CrossFit um, Championships. So you've got Froning, uh, Panchik getting getting a chance to kind of step onto the competition floor again with his with his his new teammates, um, but also kind of Royce Dunn, um, who is based in Australia, um, but they're really hoping that, that he can get over and then both of those teams can uh, can kind of compete as well. Yeah, and uh, I mean, Roy Stan has been following Mayhem's programming for years um, at the Torium Pro, I think, which is kind of like a partner, uh, you know, a two-person team workout. He was teamed with Rich, so uh, he's somebody who's, you know, even though he's based in Australia, he is very much a part of Mayhem. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it would be great to see both those teams there. And that I, I guess they're the two given <laughs> that should definitely be there. Hopefully, Royce mm-hmm. can get there, but the rest will, will, will all be there. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, Romwood, Romwood Meat Squad again. Uh, I thought they did a great job at the Filthy 150. Uh, and, they, and they were a very entertaining team. Like, they were a team that seemed like they had a lot of personality. Yeah, and I think that's really important in the in the team element as well because there is that it's an extra dimension, and you you kind of yeah you know about the individuals who've got personality, but um, you know I think it's it need, needed even more. You need to be able to kind of have a thick skin, but also kind of laugh at kind of mistakes to to an extent, or just be purely clinical and execute like mayhem freedom. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I know that there's quite a few of the teams that have already, you, I mean, as you can see from this graph, you've got quite a few lines through a few names there. Yeah. So uh, we, we've got a few that we know at least some people won't be there. Yeah, <laughs> and again, this is where kind of trying to kind of put the jigsaw together and, you know, one thing's, you know, we can come back when this is all finalised and actually see how, how close was, was this kind of guess to kind of like where we end up you know, in August, but, um, you, you misfit P10 performance. Um, so Nilsa, Willie, uh, Taylor Williamson, uh, Roy Gamboa, they're going to be joined by their ultimate Chandler Smith. Um, they're on, uh, social media. You can see they're all training for, uh, for this. They've done the qualifier. Um, and you've seen similar, like you mentioned, looking forward to seeing Romod meet squad and, and social media, which suggests that they're, uh, you know, planning to be at mayhem madness. Um, uh, looking at some of the other invites, so I'm not sure if Butcher's Lab, who are based in Europe, will be making the trip over, but they should have received a, an invite um, based on their performance at, at Pandaland. However, and I'll get into it in a bit, I know there are some other invites that are coming as well. So perhaps that suggests, um, you know, that, that, you know, there are going to be perhaps some that say, you know, that's, that's not something we, we, can, we can manage right now. Moving on to Team Odd Squad, which is a, a, a mixture, I believe, of, of misfit athletes, misfit athletics. Um, Alexis Johnson, I've, I've kind of put a line through her name because really sad, like in, uh, in lockdown, she actually ruptured her Achilles tendon. So that kind of put her out. Um, and I've also then seen that um, I think Brandon Luckett was planning to go to... Um, aromas and compete at the reduced games so that might have kind of suggested that that team was shrinking but then i've also seen um i can't remember his first name but cook um is also kind of appears in one of the other teams for the online qualifier so he's in um team misfit who are are third in the online qualifier leaderboard at the moment yeah maybe five of the nine are pretty much written in stone and and the others i i kind of think it's going to be more looking at positions in the online qualifier yeah um but at the same time you think that we missed a load of sanctioned events you know that that got cancelled so we would have seen probably quite a number of these teams show up anyway um you've got i like uh, so like team um krypton basically alex smith's team Mm. uh so at dubai they had we've got cake which is kind of like just a a muck around team because they had Danny Spiegel who was already qualified. I think she'd already qualified. Yeah, she qualified through the open. So she was already, you know, had a individual spot for the games. So she was just doing it for a bit of fun. Uh, and they came second, even though they were just doing it. <laughs> just for fun. For fun. <laughs> just for, for fun and prize money. I didn't even uh, have the right shoes. I just turned uh, up. <laughs> uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they do because um, they did very well in all the, um, like, sanction competitions they did the previous year uh, where they were i think team romwad and then 
they did very well as uh, we got cake, but they had Danny on as their alternate. Mm. Went to the games last year with uh, Camille instead of uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. they subbed in. I can't think who had who they'd qualified with that they needed to to bring in uh, Camille. But anyway, they they did well at the games, but not as well as they would have liked. That's an interesting team, but they're they're top of the. I mean, again, this leaderboard may be adjusted, but they they came top of the online qualifier with really impressive performance uh, of this kind of modified team now. So I think they could be a really interesting team to to look at. As you've already mentioned, kind of Alex Smith, like is part of that Krypton team, um, and they yeah. And this, this is the thing with kind of like. Uh, your kind of super teams but also through this like there's no requirement for these athletes to train together um so you know it was um you know there's there's a kind of it it can be difficult to understand who's going to train where and and in what team um so you know i'd already in team go wad who should get an invite through their um which, which was which was up from Waterpalooza, assuming that the backfill process is kind of like calendar calendarized um so mayhem freedom had already qualified through um may uh, through strength and depth so then they kind of this the invite for Waterpalooza actually goes to second which is team go wad but you rule out williamson and nisler because they're actually in the misfit p10 uh, team as well um, and actually, uh, Street Horner, who was part of that team, is now in Krypton team with Alex Smith, um, uh, Prevo, and uh, and Pichelli as well. And they are sitting at the top. Let's assume that there's not going to be massive changes to the leaderboard, but we all know that could actually happen. And you know, if, if kind of re- videos are uh, kind of reviewed and and deemed that kind of big deductions need to be made, then we might see this change significantly. But at the moment, it looks like we might see a number of those kind of athletes shifting into uh, into other teams and, and, and being on the competition floor, but in a different team. Yeah, I, I feel it's, you know, obviously we're, we're speculating a lot of this before it's, it's all kind of said and done and, and wrapped up. So I think when we get that final list, some things will maybe be obvious, some things you'll kind of go, okay, that makes sense. I, I see why they've done that. Uh, you know, there, there's probably considerations of people that may be, you know, haven't had the facilities to train. So maybe, you know, they're locked down somewhere where they just can't even get to a gym. So that there's so many variables up in the air that yeah. really it's just going to be a case of, of wait and see. Yeah. But, but one thing we can be sure of is that all of the teams that we're like looking at here on the, the online qualifier or those that did qualify through um, the sanction events are like incredible teams. Yeah, uh, in, yeah. well incredible individuals that have been put together and formed incredible teams so this is in no way a kind of runner-up sort of uh oh you couldn't quite make it as an individual let's see what you can do on a team this is you know going to be a, a incredible thing to watch yeah the programming that, that rich is putting together i mean being in cookville that kind of the sort of what's often considered like CrossFit Mecca. <laughs> it's going to be, um, I mean, it's just going to be such a unique experience. Uh, and the fact that it's also going to be live streamed for free so we can all watch it, which is, uh, you know, I appreciate that being here in the UK. I think that's yeah. very, very kind of them. If they want to also take into account the time difference and put the events on at a different time just for us, you know, I'd appreciate <laughs> that even more. But yeah, and I think you've hit the nail on the head there. Yeah, there's huge uncertainty, but what is certain is that whatever competition goes ahead is going to have some really big names. Hopefully, we see some big names, not just from from the from the USA and Canada, but also it'd be great to kind of see some athletes able to get over from from kind of Europe as well. Um, I did hear from from Mike Catris that the athlete program have had an invite. Um, I, you know, not sure where that fits you know is it through their performance in in sanctionals but that that's really exciting for for four uk athletes there so uh you know but again there's then the logistics to think about there um some other of the names jeffrey adler um is in the canadians who are sitting quite high up at the moment um but with um emily rolf who's was at the games last year and and caroline reason to um there's also a team misfit but that's got um a, f- a few uh names that were in sanctional level teams as well so um and we might even then see kind of like 
um, you know, chasing the madness are, are probably on, on the bubble all right about now. Um, again, this could all shift, but you know, we've got people like um, uh, Alison Scuds in there oh, and Sagafi as well, who was at Rogue Invitational. So loads of big names. So it's, it, it's no doubt that that competition floor is going to be full of some, uh, some really awesome athletes. And we've got some entertainment all being well in the first week in August. One question that you might know, uh, what happened to Team Wade? So Team Wade don't seem to be yeah. kind of around. So it, the, it, the reason I ask is because if anybody did watch Strength and Depth, they, I mean, they put in a real fight with, they mayhem had to earn. Yeah, you know, yeah, they did. Uh, so it's a shame that we don't, you know, I think they would have done really well if they'd been able to get there. But, uh, but also as a kind of, a team once again from this part of the world like you you wonder whether or not it's even worth doing <laughs> the qualifier if they didn't think they're going to have any chance of getting there so. yeah awesome well yeah i say we could kind of talk forever on this because there's a lot of uncertainty but uh once again jason really appreciate you jumping on and, and kind of chewing the fat over the latest and greatest uh athletes and and who we might get to see competing at the beginning of august yeah, it's very strange to talk about something that is, is sort of so vague <laughs> that <laughs> you you could speculate all night. Um, I think you mentioned before we were recording that there hasn't really been anything put out about this uh, it, recently uh, from any of the kind of usual sources. And I, I think we start to understand why. I think yeah, it's uh, yeah. there, there's no way you can say something that will not probably be contradicted within a day or two from from this. But hey still still fun to chat about it right yeah absolutely and uh, uh hopefully anyone listening isn't like oh that was vague but i can tell you i i was listening to the q a and and it's definitely clear that uh kind of rich and, and rory they're both like yeah we we might do this we might do that you know and and it is it's it's their their competition you know it's not a sanctional and and let's also recognize you know that the restrictions on, on the world right now so you know Hopefully we don't see something completely different to what we've discussed, but we can definitely revisit it when things are clearer. Cheers. Well, great to talk to you again, and uh, we'll, we'll talk again soon, I've got no doubt. Cheers. Thank you.